it's a bit like a spirograph. <laughs> That's what these, um, these knobs remind me of. So you can turn the growl up and down there. You can change all the things. So what I wanted to show today is a very cool bass amp sim. Now, I've shown a lot of guitar amp sims before, and I've actually shown this one before, but I haven't used it, and I think someone said in the chat earlier that they own this and they just don't use it enough. It is the Mammoth Bass Amp Sim, and uh, it is very, very darn cool. If we jump over here, it is this one here. Uh, look at that. Look at that logo, for starters. Uh, it's from Aurora DSP, who makes some good stuff, and it is only $6.99. So it's actually a very, very affordable app. And for bass, bass doesn't get a whole lot of love. There's so many different guitar amp sims, guitar amp impulse response that we've seen the new one from Nembrini. Uh, you got your tone bridge, you got your amplitude, you got your bias FX, you got so many different guitars. And look, some of them do bass, but nothing is as dedicated to bass as the Mammoth. So what can we do with it? Well, at the moment, as I said, we've got our bass here, which is uh, which is just through our bass amp. Sounds like this. We'll just turn it up so that we can hear it nice and sweetly. And look, the, the GarageBand bass amps are not a bad thing. Like, there's there's plenty to choose from here. You've got a heap of different distorted, clean, and processed. You can tweak them here by changing all of your amp settings and adding in stomp boxes and the like. But there's nothing quite like the Mammoth in terms of the sound. Now, you can use it in two ways. One way is to actually put it over the top. So you, you'll see here that I've, I've added it here. I'll take a step back and remove it. So we'll just remove it from here. You do get one slot here with your GarageBand amps. So you can add it here as extra. And yes, you're technically going through two amps if you do this, but you'll come over to your audio unit extensions, scroll on down to the Mammoth, and then uh, tap on here, and you've got all of your options. Now, it's a bit daunting when you see all of this because there's a heap going on here. And I won't run through all of this in detail because what I do when I'm using an amp like this is the best way to learn what all these do is to actually use your presets. So here in the middle, you've got these presets. You can come in here and you can set a preset. So we tap it on there. Uh, it's a bit far away there. I can't actually read that. What is that? Primal. So we can go with the primal and you can see here that this adjusts your drive. This gives you a whole lot more bass. It blends it in there. Like it, it adds some growl. And look at the way that these work. Like when you, when you turn it, it just goes like, it's the most interesting thing. It's like, remember those, um, what were those things called? Not Etch-a-Sketches, but those things where you did the spirograph. It's a bit like a spirograph. <laughs> That's what these um, these knobs remind me of. So you can turn the growl up and down there. You can change all the things. So we'll, we'll just put it back to that one. Boom. And um, if we play this back now with the mammoth on there, take a listen to this. I'll turn it down. Otherwise, it's probably going to rock our socks off too much. Right? Let's bring this back with our guitars and you'll hear how much more it cuts through. Very cool. So we can do that. And look, there's there's a lot of different tones. This is more for your, your very kind of growly and distorted bass. But there's some different presets in here that are not quite as intense you can play around with. So it's just a matter of uh, selecting them and jumping around here. But you can actually, of course, manually adjust, adjust all this stuff as well. So if we have our bass here and we come in here, we can start playing with our knobs. Yeah. And, uh, and dial in the tone that we want. So a little bit less drive, perhaps slightly cleaner tone you can adjust the amount of bass there so do you want it to really push through yep you got some EQ across the middle here that you can adjust if you want to add a little more, more low there probably a bit too much high end in there <laughs> you can just hear that and uh, the growl is a pretty fun option here let's just add in some growl right If you see a button labelled melt, hit it. Yeah, right? Because that'll melt your face. Wow, I can... I'm wearing... I've used the headphones here, but um, 
yeah, it, it kind of, it, it feels, you can feel the bass as much as you can hear the bass when you've got a good sort of bass sound here. Now, if you don't want to go through two, if you want to just use the Mammoth for your processing, pretty simple. All you need to do is create a new blank track. So just go to your add new track, go to more sounds, and of course, it's under fun and clean. Tap on that one, and you've got yourself a clean track. Now, all you need to do is bring your bass. So I'll just, just drag this track up, pop it under here, and then we can grab a little square, go around all of our bass parts here, tap on them, tap again, hit the copy button, and then we can unsolo this one and bring it down. Now, just make sure that you line that sucker up. This is the thing where it usually gets you. Because if you're copying from one track to another and you don't line it up perfectly, that's where you get that horrible garage band problem of it being slightly off the grid and you not knowing what the heck you did. And if you don't catch it at the time, you get like 10 steps down the road and trying to line it back up is an absolute pain in the butt. So now we've got this just on a regular track and this is just our pure bass sound. Not doing anything, yeah? It's our direct bass signal. So now we can actually come in here and we can add a plugin and EQ. We'll go to our edit button. I always get rid of the effect EQ because I never use it. And then we can tap the plus button here and add the mammoth in directly here. So you don't need a guitar track. You don't need a bass track specifically. You can just have the mammoth on here. And with the default settings, oh, it's 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 Fuzz City. <laughs> let's, uh, well, that's a cool one. That's got a lot of treble in there, doesn't it? Need a little bit more bass. There we go. So you can dial that in there, and then you've just got your bass sound there. And then if we just bring our drums and our guitar back in, we have our bass sounding like this. <laughs> And the other thing you can do then, of course, because you're just here on your regular audio track, is if you hit the edit button, you've now got three more plugin slots to add other things in here. So if that's not enough, say that you love that, but you wanted to add some more distortion, well, guess what? You can do it. And you know what we just downloaded? Told you we'd come back to this. We just downloaded a brand new Nembrini plugin, which is the Nembrini, uh, what is it? The Black uh, I've got to find it now. NA Black. Here it is. The Nembrini Audio Black Distortion. And now what you can do, we've added it there. It's put it after the amp. So we'll, we'd probably want to adjust this. So if you hit the edit button there, you can grab it and just drag it up and put it in front of there. This could, um, this could actually send us into another dimension here. Uh, if we add this. So we've got a very simple drive, filter, and level uh, knobs here on our black distortion. So uh, let's, uh, let's hit play and see what happens here, folks. Well, that's some nice fuzz. Hang on, let's come back to the start of that bass part. So there it is with the black distortion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Drive that sucker up. And look, are we looking for a super distorted bass in this one? Maybe, maybe not. But it's fun to play around with. It kind of reminds me of Ben Folds. If you heard the Ben Folds bass tone, that kind of sounds like that. It sounds like it's a it's through a distortion pedal, and uh, the Mammoth bass amp just gives it that uh, that guts that uh, that works well. So let's bring it back here, and uh, we'll uh, we'll play we'll play a different section of this song together, and just see if this bass tone is going to work for us here. So it's probably a little bit fuzzy. We'd probably want to play around with that. Maybe I'm driving it too hard if we if we drop the level down there. <laughs> no. See, now it's too quiet. I think just the mammoth is good. There you go. So uh, yeah, in terms of having something in your toolkit that's not going to cost a fortune, but is something you can turn to. If you're making heavier music, you're making rock music, you're making even funk music, soul music, and you want to have a uh, nice bass tone, then the Mammoth Bass Amp plugin is worth considering.